Welcome back to MMA Al Dente. I'm here to talk about Jagas Jumagulov for the last fucking time this month as he fights Joshua Van. Hopefully this fight gets into the octagon. Jagas has had a lot of shit luck in decisions and in fight cancellations. And here he's got a kid, 21 years old, Joshua Van, stepping up on short notice. This fight was booked at the end of last week, I believe. So about a week's notice and hopefully he gets in the octagon. But Joshua Van, he's 21 years old, 7-1 and one as a pro, pretty inexperienced. And I think he's got one inch of height, and I don't know the reach. But I imagine Joshua Van's got height and reach on Jagas Jumagulov. Uh, Jagas Jumagulov, he's 14-8, and eight, 34 years old. Jagas, we've, you know, I've covered it in every video. He's been on the wrong end of some shit decisions, real shit decisions. And his record could look a lot prettier. It actually forced him to retire at some point last year. And now he's come back and he might just retire if he can't get a fight after so many cancellations. But uh, he's a very skilled fighter. Very skilled fighter. Mainly a wrestle boxer type of fighter. He's got one submission. And even in that one submission, he pretty much had to knock the guy out to get it. Jerome Rivera happened in the UFC. But uh, he's a guy that is... You know, very skilled and underrated at this point because he's been on the end of such shit decisions. His this his losses, the knockout losses, come to Vartan Asatrian, this very good fighter in the uh, European scene, uh, and he also beat him by split decision. J uh, he beats J Jalgis by split decision in a five round fight. Uh, and the other knockout loss comes to Manel Cop, who you know is the most dangerous fighter in the division, and the stoppage was so so. But uh, still, no shame in losing to those two guys. The decision losses are all to awesome fighters. And a lot of them bullshit. Holly and Paiva, Charles Johnson, uh, Jeff Molina. The only guy to beat him cleanly by decision was Amir Albazi. And look where he's at now. I know. Kai Kaur France won the fight. But... Uh, Jalgas, I should mention again, before he got to the UFC, he was on a three-fight winning streak, all winning five-rounders against really good fighters. Tyson Nam, Tagir Ulanbekov, and Ali Bagotinov, former title challenger in the UFC. Uh, he's definitely a guy that's got good cardio and can fight hard for 25 minutes, certainly 15. And uh, historically, he's very durable. And I just think uh, he's a tough matchup for most newcomers, and especially guys on short notice, you know, and this is one of them. But jo Joshua Van, let's get into it. I really like him as a prospect. He's 7-1. and one. All of his fights take place in Fury FC. He's got five knockouts, two submissions, zero decisions. That's what I like about him. And his one loss is by submission. The one loss was this guy, uh, Devon Jackson, guy was twice as strong as he was and ripped him to the mat multiple times was all over him I actually thought a lot of Joshua Van's submission defense he was in some tight arm bars and in a lot of danger throughout that fight and he kept surviving but then, then at the end of round two he was just caught and uh, tapped out uh, with a rear naked choke but uh, what he's shown me in his victories all finishes again is versatility and danger everywhere he had this one fight against this guy. Who was it? Mario something. This guy Mario, he beat him up in the end. Was about to get a TKO victory, you know, beating him up against the cage. And he's got really good striking. Really good uh, striking Joshua Van. He's got good hands and powerful kicks as well. Gotten some uh, nice uh, moments out of knees as well. And uh, he was beating this guy up, about to get the finish. Forced a sloppy shot. Spun around the take his back in the turtle position there and instead of digging in a hook or going under his neck or whatever he locked up a calf slicer and tapped him out immediately so does you know despite the submission loss i want to say i'm excited to see this guy grapple but on the feet that's where he's gotten most of his finishes five of his seven and uh he's looked really good there he's got power he uh knocked out this one guy with a beautiful combination he actually Got the job done with a jab at the end of a long combination. The guy, uh, Paris Moran. It was a jab that got him down. And, uh, and then, uh, whatever. That was pretty much the beginning and the end. There was more head kick, submission, whatever the fuck. But either way, I like what I see from him as a striker. I think he's got power, and I think, uh, 
uh, to be so young and be throwing combinations like that and attaching jabs at the end and seeing the results, the fruits of that extra punch and whatever, I think he's shown to be a disciplined fighter, pretty disciplined fighter for 21-year-old. I do think there's a lot of upside with Joshua Van, but I can't pick again. I can't pick him here. You know, maybe I can bet on him if his line is juicy. But I'd really only bet on round one once that line surfaces, because otherwise I think Jagajuma Gulab will be taking over this fight. It'll be a fight in which he has to tame the newcomer, maybe survive and whatever, and get past round one, but then take over down the stretch. I think that's how it would be with a full camp, but certainly with no camp, or you know, I don't know what's state he's in, uh, you know, uh, training-wise or whatever, but I think uh, with a f full camp, that's what would have happened, and here I'm pretty sure that's definitely what would happen. So, I'm picking Zhagazuma Gulov. I bet on him at minus 170. I uh, Again, I like Joshua Van, but not enough to not bet on Zhagaz at minus 170. Again, I think he's an underrated fighter, and there's value there. Of course, now he's up at uh, minus 190. Still value there, in my opinion, but I was happy to get him at minus 170. What do you want from me? Again, I make these videos uh, after I do the research. But uh, Jalgis is my pick for this fight. I think it's about time he gets his hand raised here. You know, I know he beat Jerome Rivera, but uh, still, it's about time he gets his hand raised again. I think he's going to get it done. Like, share, subscribe, all that horseshit, and check out my other videos.